Well, we're learning more today about what Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's separation will mean for Sophie Gregoire's public life. A source with knowledge of the situation says Gregoire Trudeau will no longer represent the government of Canada and will not be considered the spouse of the Prime Minister in any official capacity. They also say she will continue to be present at Rideau Cottage, but has made arrangements to move into a private residence nearby at her own expense. Now, the Trudeaus announced yesterday they're separating after 18 years of marriage. The joint statement on social media says the decision came after many meaningful and difficult conversations. The Post goes on to read, as always, we remain a close family with deep love and respect for each other and for everything we have built. For the well-being of their children, the Trudeaus are asking Canadians to respect the family's privacy at this time. Joining us now is John Wright, the executive vice president of Mayor Public Opinion, to talk more about the situation uh, sort of politically here. We're not talking about private lives, but the potential politics here. John, you've been taking the sort of measure of Canadian public opinion for a while now. The current polls show the Liberals maybe 7 to 10 points behind. Could this have an impact on Justin Trudeau's political future? I don't think it's going to have an immediate impact whatsoever. I think most Canadians, you know, recognize that four in ten households across this country experience something very similar. So they're going to give it the space that it deserves. I mean, we know that supporters from opposition parties, uh, not necessarily the leadership, but the supporters are probably going to be making hay of it. But for the rest of the people, I don't think it's really going to matter. Mm -hmm. And going back to a bit of history, uh, John, uh, Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre uh, Trudeau, also was separated from, from his wife. Mm -hmm. What kind of an impact did it have during that time? Well, he came back to win a majority government later on, but, you know, it was a very different circumstance for those of us who actually were alive at that time and lived through it. Margaret Trudeau had been out partying with the Stones, uh, the Rolling Stones. She'd been at Club 54. There was a whole other context to this. I mean, the Prime Minister's current wife at the moment is nothing like that. And so it gave, in fact, the Prime Minister some support at the time, and he stayed in politics. But it's a different circumstance. Here, I think it's much more quiet, much more reserved, and uh, most people are giving it the due respect that it uh, it requires. And John, it was interesting. You said in your first answer, you know, point out that you know four in ten Canadians sort of mm -hmm. ha are, are, can relate to this because this is something that's happened in their lives. Do Canadians really even care that much anymore about whether someone is separated, divorced, or even married? Quite frankly, in, in public political life. Sure. I think that they care because there's kids involved and people are very, very uh, careful about making sure that they're protected. But I think on the whole, Nick, that it, it just doesn't have that kind of an impact politically unless there's a destabilization of the government in, if there's some impairment that the prime minister has in carrying out the responsibility or if we find out something more about this relationship mm -hmm. that, you know, has been compromised in some way that's uh, untowards. But right now, I think most people will just go back to the summer and we'll wait for the prime minister and his wife to make the next moves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what kind of implications do you think this might have on the upcoming, you know, the next election or, or going forward? Well, you know, uh, there's a couple of things there. First of all, in and of itself, I don't think it's really going to have an impact on the polls. The Prime Minister, as you rightly said off the top, is sitting at about 28% in the polls. I think if he were to slide down to 26, it would be problematic for the party, but I don't think it's going to have an immediate impact because we know the election may not come until 2025, so there's lots of time to go. I think this is more, as I said at the outset, about the supporters of either the Liberals or the opposition and how they're treating it. You know, there was a big cabinet shuffle just recently. There are probably some people who have some ambitions to actually have that leadership. They may be burning up the phone lines over the next couple of days, but it, for the rest of the Canadian public, we got a hot summer. We got uh, the rest of the time to go, and the Trudeaus are going to keep this out of the news. They're, I mean, they may have some scrutiny, but they've made it very clear that they're going to, you know, keep it uh, very low key and make sure that they just focus on the kids. And John, you know, we should point out, you know, Justin Trudeau uh, has dealt with scandal before. I mean, think about mm -hmm. blackface, yeah. you know, before a couple of elections, before, you know, two elections ago. Uh, he has this ability to sort of come through things almost kind of regardless of what's happened before. Yeah, he does. As I said, you know, unless there's something more untoward about what has happened here, I think the scrutiny, in fact, will start to fade over the next number of weeks. And in fact, he'll reemerge as the leader of the country. You may not agree with his politics, but politics is the thing that he's known for and that there will be scrutiny. The reality is that there doesn't need to be an election until 2025. Mm -hmm. That's a long time from now. And uh, during that time frame, like his father, uh, Justin Trudeau may, in fact, uh, win another day. Mm -hmm. Okay. John Wright from Maru Public Opinion, thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thanks, John.
always great to be with you. Okay.